Shalom. Giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachachakwarash. Double honors to the apostles, the bishops, and the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations, as always, to the elect. And I just wanted to bring out this prophecy concerning Yahweh Shai, as it is written here in uh, Micah, the fifth chapter. All right, and um, when you listen to a lot of people who deny Yahweh Shai, you know, especially these Israelites, um, their premise is that ultimately, you know, when they deny the New Testament, you know, they're basically saying that there are no prophecies speaking of, you know, the Messiah to come. Ultimately, this is just a figment of our imagination. And, um, you know, it's Yah only, you know, the, the, the most high only. He doesn't have, you know, a mediator. All right. Uh, even though <laughs> under the first covenant, you know, the mediators were ultimately the uh, sons of Aaron, Aaron and his sons. All right. And as we showed you in the lesson that I posted before this one, you know, that angel that was sent to deliver the children of Israel out of Egypt you know, himself was a mediator, okay, and was in charge of ultimately you were to believe on him and he would he would pardon your sins. Now, and that's the duty of a, a priest. And we have to understand that there's a high priest in the heavens and everything that we had in the form of the Levitical priesthood was uh, mimicking something that was already, you know, set. Now, I wanted to get this prophecy real quick for those who think that Yahweh Shai just popped up in the New Testament and that uh, ultimately his presence isn't in the Holy Scriptures um, even in the Torah and the Tanakh, you know, the, the prophets you know, even the writings as far as the, uh, you know, the uh, poetry, you know, the uh, Proverbs, the Psalms, his presence is there, alright um, when you read this here in Micah the 5th chapter, this is a prophecy that uh, speaks to the coming Messiah, all right, being born in a, the, the land of Bethlehem. So I'm going to read it real quick. It says, Micah 5 and 2, but thou Bethlehem, Ephratah, all right, and when you um, understand that land, Ephratah, all right, um, you have, you can go to the history of Ruth, and ultimately that land that uh, came, you know, with, uh, you know, Boaz, Mary, and Ruth, you know, this is that land, okay? This is the land that, you know, uh, eventually King David, you know, King Solomon, and eventually our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shah HaMashiach, will be born in, okay? You can just um, look up this land, and I have lessons. We have lessons going into this land, but uh, Aparath, Aparath, all right? Uh, a place of fruitfulness, okay? This is where Rachel died another name for Bethlehem, all right, as you can see here, okay, and um, when you go to the history of Ruth, you know, that was the land, all right, that uh, ultimately came with her as Boaz was the kinsman redeemer because the original owner of this land, all right, uh, Allah Malak, okay, passed away and his sons passed away, so Boaz was the kinsman redeemer who ultimately redeemed the land, all right, and eventually uh, married Ruth, and through Ruth would eventually come, um, you know, uh, Obed, then Jesse, who was David's father, and then David, and then Solomon, and so forth. This was ultimately uh, tracking the lineage of the Messiah, okay? That's the importance of the book of Ruth. Now, when you read this prophecy concerning Yahweh Shai, or the savior, a ruler from Bethlehem, all right, it says, but you Bethlehem, Ephrata, all right, though thou be little, all right, among the thousands of Judah, you know, Bethlehem is just a small portion of the land, you know, uh, promised to the tribe of Judah as far as inheritance, see, yet out of thee, out of that land, shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel whose goings forth have been from old and from everlasting let's read this in the NLT 
all right? But you, O Bethlehem Ephratah, are only a small village among all the people of Judah. Yet a ruler will come from you whose origins are from the distant past. So his origin, all right, are from the distant past, are from everlasting, all right? Meaning <laughs> his coming forth, all right, was from the foundation of the earth. All right, now this is the prophecy when you get the book of uh, John real quick. Let's get John, the seventh chapter, the 42nd verse. When, uh, you know, there was a division over Yahweh Shai here in John, the seventh chapter and the 40th verse. Many of the people, therefore, when they heard Yahweh Shai saying, said of a truth, this is the prophet. This is the one we've been expecting, as you can see here in the... the uh, NLT. So there was always prophecies leaning towards a particular son being born. All right. It's in the book of Isaiah, the ninth chapter, Isaiah, the seventh chapter unto us, a son is born. All right. Genesis, the 49th chapter talks about Shiloh coming. See. So this 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 narrative that Yahweh Shai is coming, you know, in the New Testament is false and something made up is completely stupid. OK, because it was promised. All right. Another example. Let's keep reading here. It says and others said this is the anointed one. But some said, show the Messiah, the anointed one come from Galilee. OK, let's read it in the NLT. Others said he is the Messiah. Still others uh, said, but he can't be. Will the Messiah come from Galilee? Now, we know that the Messiah was born in Bethlehem. Right. But ultimately, he had to flee persecution, his, him and his parents, his parents and him had to flee the persecution of Herod. And eventually they uh, fled to Egypt. And um, from that point, you know, they uh, settled back in Galilee. All right. Nazareth, which was a subdivision of Nazareth or Galilee. And this is where he was uh, raised. But he was born in Bethlehem, as the scripture said. All right, but when you read what they're saying here, as they're trying to figure out if this is the Messiah or not, verse 42 says, For the scriptures clearly state that the Messiah will be born of the royal line of David in Bethlehem, the village where the King David was born. So the crowd was divided about him. All right, so they were looking in the scrolls and ultimately trying to figure out, did he match what was written? See? See? And this was while the Romans were ruling. For those of you who are saying that the New Testament is, is, is made up. All right. Well, when you read Daniel's vision in Daniel, the seventh chapter, the fourth beast is the Roman Empire. Where do we find a record of the Jews in that empire, in that captivity, in the Roman captivity? Where, we, where can we read what they were doing in the writings and what happened? Well, we read it in the New Testament. OK, now going back. So what this is actually saying here in Micah, the fifth chapter. But you, O Bethlehem, verse two, Ephratah, all right, are only a small village among the people of Judah. Yet a ruler will come from you whose origins are from the distant past. So his origin. OK, his beginnings are from the distant past. All right. As it reads in the King James, whose goings forth have been from old, from everlasting. OK, so let's get some precepts. OK. Of, of uh, uh, you know, <laughs> let's get Proverbs 8 and 22. All right. And this is Yahweh Shai. All right. This is Solomon speaking. All right. But ultimately, he's speaking in the spirit. OK. Proverbs 8 and 22. Yahweh possessed me in the beginning of his way before his works of old. John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the word and the word was with power and the word was power. The same was in the beginning with the power. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. So this is the only begotten son, the first spirit created by the heavenly father, 
Yahweh, okay? Yahweh Shai, all right? So when he was born as Yahweh Shai, yes, he was born, all right? He had to come through the royal lineage of David, all right? He had to grow up. He had to become a sacrifice, all right? But his origin, all right, is not just the book of Matthew, okay? He is the expressed word that was in the beginning, okay? Colossians 1 and 17. For he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Okay? 1 John 1 and 1. That which was from the beginning, all right, which we have heard, which we have seen with our own eyes, which we have looked upon, all right, and our hands have handled the word of life. Revelation 1 and 11. I am the Alpha and the Omega. All right. Now, going here to John. Okay. After John breaks down in the beginning was the word. All right. John tells you what? In verse 14. All right. And the word was made flesh. Okay. And dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So that first spirit that was created by the Most High God, Yahweh, okay, he came into the earth many times, all right? Most important, okay, was ultimately to be that sacrifice, all right? But you have to understand, this spirit, <laughs> all right, was created in the beginning, all right. And not only was this spirit, you know, uh, did he come into the earth as that angel who delivered us out of Egypt? But there's various other times that he came into the earth. You see. And John. All right. When you read John's writings, he's presenting Yahweh Shai. All right. From his royal position as the only begotten of the most high. You see what I'm saying? And he, he breaks this down. Okay, 1 John 1 and 1, okay, the incarnate word, the wisdom of the Most High, all right, came in flesh as Yahweh Shai. See, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our own eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled the word of life. For the life was manifested and we have seen it. And bear witness and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the father and it was manifested unto us. So John is breaking it down. He's letting you know that <laughs> and he understood that this was the son of the most high. This was that first spirit created and he dwelt amongst us. We walked with him. That which we have seen. Let's read it in the uh, NLT. We proclaim to you what ourselves have actually seen and heard. So that you may have fellowship with us and our fellowship is with the father and with his son, Yahweh Shai. We are writing these things so that ye may fully share our joy. So he's presenting unto you the word of the most high who came in flesh. You see, so a lot of people who deny the son of the most high. All right. They come from. All right, a uh, position that ultimately where in the Old Testament did the Most High have a son? You know, well, let's get this scripture real quick. Let's see here. All right, Psalms 80 and 17. Let thy hand be upon the man of thy right hand and upon the son of man whom thou have made it strong for thyself. And we know that Yahweh Shai, all right, is ultimately the uh at the right hand of the father all right now there's other scriptures which we always go into but ultimately clearly the most high has a son see and that son didn't just pop up on the scene <laughs> in the new testament all right that son's origins go back to the distant past this is why yahweh shy in john the 17th chapter all right, when he was about to complete his duty, okay? 
John 17 and 4, I have glorified thee on earth. I have finished the work which, work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. So there is a glory that Yahawashai had with his father, all right, before the world was, man. And again, Proverbs, the eighth chapter, breaks that down, okay? If you have the spirit, okay? Pro Proverbs 8 and 22, the Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way before his works of old. I was set up from everlasting from the beginning or ever the earth was. When there was no depths, I was brought forth. When there was no foundations abounding with water. Again, chosen from the foundation of the earth. Okay. Before the mountains were settled, before the hills was brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor fields, nor highest parts of the dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set the compass upon the face of the depth. When he established the clouds above. When he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he gave the sea his decree that the water should not pass his commandment, when he appointed the foundations of the earth, then was I by him as one brought up with him <laughs> as his son. I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him. All right. Rejoicing in the uh, in the uh, habitable part of his earth. And my delights were with the sons of men because of ultimately we know that that uh, those angels were created. All right. After him for the purpose of coming on earth and ruling. All right. Now, therefore, hearken unto me, O ye children, for blessed are they that keep my ways. All right. Hear instruction and be wise and refuse it not. OK. So when you read Proverbs 8 and 30. In the NLT, I was his architect at his side. I was his constant delight, rejoicing always in his presence. So there you go. All right, Yahweh Shai. All right, when you when you understand what's being written in Genesis, the first chapter. All right. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. We know that that word God is Allahayim. Allahayim. All right, rulers, judges, angels, special works or possessions of the Most High. At the forefront of that is Yahweh Shai, his only begotten son, as it is written in the book of Colossians. Okay? Colossians 1, and we'll finish it off here. Speaking of Yahweh Shai, for by him all things, all right, are all things created that are in heaven and that are in the earth, visible and invisible. Whether there be thrones or dominions or principles or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him all fullness dwell. Shalom.